Hey guys, this is Mr. Decker, and I'm working on Lesson 9 of Unit 2, the Web Development Unit. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to embed images onto our websites. So, oh, <clears throat> and I almost forgot, we're also going to learn how to use the Creative Commons licenses and give proper attribution to the original owners of the work that we use. All right, let's jump in. So, Bubble one, it says, a dog versus cat web page has been started for you. The dog image has already been added to the below web page. Look at the code that made the dog image appear. So here we can see the dog on the preview web page. We've got, looks like an H1 header. We've got an H3 header. And then right here we have our image tag for the dog. And down here we have a paragraph tag that is getting the attribution up there. Okay, so I can see that we have this H3 tag for cats. So to keep it uniform with what we already have with the dogs and the dog picture, I'm going to go ahead and turn my inspector tool off, put my cursor at the end of line 15 where that H3 tag is located. I'm going to enter down a couple times and I'm going to go ahead and start putting in the image tag while looking at line 10 right here uh, for the cat image file, which lives right here. All right, so back to the HTML page and let's put in this image tag. So we have lesson symbol img space src for source and I can click on this or I can continue typing. Uh, it's a little easier if you and faster if you click on the little helpful menus here. So source and then I can choose my file. I'm doing the cat.jpeg and now it automatically populates that and puts it in quotation marks for me. I'm going to hit my space bar one time because I need to put in my alt attribution, which you can see here. So the alt attribution is just uh, basically you're helping people who's the, who didn't get the website to load properly. And when the website doesn't load properly, it will actually say what that image was supposed to be, dog jumping. All right, let's see. So we are giving it its alt attribution. And this is going to be, I already know what the cat looks like so it's just a picture of a cat's face so cat face you don't have to like write a poem or uh, you know a declaration of independence to describe what the image looks like or what the image was supposed to be so literally a cat face right all right so uh, use the image tag to add the cat.jpg image to the page below the cat heading all right, and that is what we did. Here's the cat's heading, and we added our image tag to get that cat face to appear properly. All right, let's head to the next bubble. That was bubble one. On bubble two, when using someone else... Okay, so giving credit, here's an important part of this whole thing. When using someone else's image, you should give credit to the original creator. This is also called attribution. The easiest way to do this is to add text below the image that identifies the creator and website it came from. You may also add information about the publishing license. All right, it says do this. Add, add information about where the image came from and its license. This image was found at Pixabay and was uploaded by the user Alexis Photos, who used a free for commercial use and no attribution required license. All right, so been below uh, line 17, where we created our image tag for that cat, we are going to put uh, the attribution just like you see here, but for the cat image. All right, so I'm going to enter down a couple times, keep my code nice and organized. So on a blank line 19, I'm going to make a paragraph tag. And... Inside that paragraph tag, I need to type out the attribution. So looking at this, they put the 
uh, name of the artist first, then the website where it was found, and then the Creative Commons license agreement. So I'm going to go ahead and say Alexis Photos, and obviously that's not someone's name. That is um, a username for that individual on Pix Pixabay. So now we list the website, Pixabay another hyphen and then uh, they said that it was free for commercial use no attribution required uh, license so we will do an a or let's see while they said no attribution required we do have an attribution here so by um, be in a if it was, or in C for non-commercial, free for commercial use, so B-Y-S-A, it's basically a share alike um, with the no attribution required. So let's end that paragraph tag. And then it should show up right there. Good, 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 good. So B-Y-S-A, you're just saying I've listed who who it's by, I've told you where to find it, and then the SA is this, right, free for commercial use, so share, share alike. <clears throat> All right, let's finish. All right, actually, let's go back to bubble two. I just want to make sure we did everything, added information, yep, we did everything required for that one. All right, bubble three. All right, so for this one, it says the details matter. The source attribute needs to point to the exact file name of the image you want to use. That means that you need to pay attention to the spelling, the capitalization, and the file extension. Each of the three images on this page is broken because of an improper source attribute. So uh, what is the attribute? An attribute is the extra information included in a tag. Attributes have names and values. The name tells what type of information is being provided, and then the value gives the specific information for that tag. Uh, it also says, for example, tags have two attributes, the source and the alt. The source specifies the name of the image file, and alt tells the browser in a readable text what the image is. All right. Um, do, 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 do. OK. Let's jump down here, do this. Use the file menu for reference, fix each of the image tags. So over here in the file menu, we can see the names of our individual image files that are already preloaded onto this bubble. We can also see our HTML file and our CSS style sheet file. So back over to the HTML file, we can see that between the, the head and in head tags at the top of our program, we have the style sheet already linked with a link tag with the correct uh, file name for our style sheet, nature.css. So none of those are issues. Let's go down here and look at these image tags. So on line nine, we have our first image tag for this red sky image that isn't showing up. So this is, you can see on this bubble what the alt text does. So alt, uh, equals and in quotation marks red sky that alt attribution is telling the computer what to say over here in the event that that image is not showing up all right so image source equals red dot jpg but over here we don't have a red Dot jpg we have a red underscore sky dot jpg so here we can correct so when i hit that underscore shift underscore on my keyboard it automatically shows this but i don't want to click that because uh, oh maybe i do want to click that look at that perfect <laughs> all right good org you're getting better at what you do every year i love it okay uh line 12 Let's see what the problem might be for this green grass not image or green grass image not showing up. So line twelve image tag source equals grass.jpg. 
but look at the file name up here, grass.jpg, but the JPG is capitalized, and on our HTML file on line 12, JPG is not capitalized. So I'm going to highlight the JPG right there, and I'm going to replace it with a shift JPG, and that gets that to show up as intended. And then let's see, uh, line 15 is the next one. We have source equals blue, B-L-U dot J-P-G. But over here in our file list, we have blue spelled correctly, B-L-U-E. So I'm just going to click here. I'm going to add that E, and now my blue image is showing up. And you can see the alt attribution, blue islands, and yes, indeed, very, very blue picture with some islands in it. Very good. And that is bubble three. Let's finish and continue. That's going to put us on to bubble four. All right. On bubble four, we have some work to do here. Um, let me clean this up because you're looking at a totally different file list than what I'm looking at right now. I have done this bubble already in preparation for doing this. So let me pause the video and I'll be right back with you. All right, and we're back. To you, that seemed like no time at all. To me, that feels like the time that it actually took. So uh, just a couple minutes, and now my file space looks like yours, and you're not confused, I hope. Uh, so we have a, our style sheet, and it's just a rule set for paragraphs, and the H1 tag turning that green, and changing the font family to courier monospace. All right, so back to the HTML. And let's read the instructions. It says, choosing a good name. It's important for images to have good names, ones that are easy to understand, and to use characters that are good for links. This project's image names, uh, this project's image names, sorry, have some problems. Do this. For each image, fix the name according to the following rules. We need to avoid special characters such as ampersand, question mark, percent, slashes, and uh, parentheses, etc. Make sure the name has a specific meaning that helps you know what the image is. Use dashes or underscores instead of spaces. Keep the names as short as possible and make sure they still have a clear meaning. And then choose your favorite image and add it to the web page. Don't forget the attribution. All right, so we are going to fix this entire bubble. So this might take a minute, uh, but it'll be good practice for everyone. So we are first going to fix this one. This is what? We have this file. We have the image. We have the name of the critter, and then over here, uh, we have the uh, Creative Commons attribution. OK, so this is the red-eyed tree frog. So instead of 1565 blah, 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 I'm going to name this something that makes more sense. So I'm just going to click on that drop down on that file, rename, and this will just be tree frog. How about it? Enter, and there it is. And this is going to always alphabeti alphabetize for you. So. Uh, you can see that updating over here as we correct these names. So Axolotl, uh, we don't need that file name to be so long. So I'm just going to click there after. Whoop. I'm just going to click there after. I'm just going to, yep, OK, fine. I'll use my arrow key. So I don't want to take out the JPG, so I'm going to put my cursor right between the period before that JPG and right after that parentheses at the end. So let's backspace until we have just axolotl.jpg, enter, and that's fixed. And then we have fire-salamander. Let's look at that. We have an exclamation point on the end. Let's take that off, enter. And we have caney bush frog down here. Let's rename that. Um, Instead of a space there, we'll have a dash. Uh, paratype, what, what's the paratype? Paratype, what's the paratype thingy? What is the paratype thing? 
go to that file. Oh, goodness, black stuff isn't showing up right now. Let me refresh. Let's see if it shows up correctly now. Okay, good. The paratype is the... Okay, frog on a coin. Uh, does he have... Oh. Uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Let's fix this. We'll rename it to just call it coin frog. That's obviously not the scientific term for what it is. It's just that describes the image to me. It's a frog on a coin. All right. And then I think that gets all of our file names uh, named with proper naming conventions. Now let's go ahead and start adding these things to our website. My favorite amphibians. So cursor at the end of line seven after that H1 tag entered down a couple times. And let's so go ahead and put in this image tag for the Caney bush frog. So image space SRC for source. And this is going to be the uh, Caney dash bush frog. Let me toggle these instructions out of my way so we can maybe see that better. I'm going to type now K for Caney Bushfrog, that file name. There you go. Automatically adds it. You don't have to type that out. And then space. When I hit the space bar, it automatically pops up with this uh, menu. I'm going to choose the alt. And then uh, the Caney, I'm just going to say it's a Caney Bushfrog. And then I'm going to move my cursor or click for my cursor to be after that quotation mark and then close that image tag. And then my image is automatically showing up for me. Uh, after that, we need to add the attribution, which is already typed there for us. So control C to copy that. And then on a blank line 11, Let's do the paragraph tag, control V, end paragraph tag. Oh, I think I messed that up a little bit. So shift, there we go. There we go. All right, so right here you can see the correct uh, CCBYSA there for that. And then, okay, next we have frog on coin or coin frog. So let's enter down a couple times. Let's put this image tag in here. Space, SRC, and then coin frog, space, alt. Um, and I'm just going to call it frog on coin for the alt attribution and close that tag. All right, enter down a couple times. Let's put in the attribution. Control C, Control V, and then we will, whoa, it grabbed way too much. So Control Z to undo that. Let's make sure we're only grabbing this. Control C again. Back down here to line 15, Control V, there we go. And then end that paragraph tag. There's that super long uh Image attribution. All right, so image space, and we are now going to work on the tree frog, the red eyed tree frog to be more specific. It's SRC. Uh, where is my tree frog? There he is. Space alt red eyed tree frog over in that tag. Let's do another paragraph. And we're just copying this right here to throw into this paragraph tag, Control-V. And I'm working through this kind of quick. So for those of you at home and those of you using the video to work your way through it, the best practice with this stuff is to watch me do a step, pause, and then repeat the step. So that will slow it down for you so you can keep up with the speed. All right, now we need to get our fire sal salamander on here. So another image tag, SRC, make sure, whoop, SRC, 
Okay, it's not wanting. There we go. Equals. Now it's using it. Uh, fire salamander space alt fire salamander. And that tag, our fire salamander should show up. Yes, he does. Enter down a couple times. Let's put this paragraph tag. Now let's throw in this attribution to the paragraph tag and end that paragraph tag. And that should look right. Yes, it does. And then lastly, we have the axolotl. <clears throat> let's throw him in here. Image src. And we have the axolotl space and alt. And he is an axolotl. If you weren't familiar with the axolotl, that's what an, what an axolotl looks like. Let's put in our paragraph tag and let's put in this attribution, equal V, and let's end that paragraph tag. Okay, so everything's on here that it's asking for, except it also wanted me to choose my favorite image and add it to the web page. So there are a couple of websites that are great for finding images where it's going to be easy to find the uh, alt attribution for stuff. One of those is pixforlearning.com. Uh, and the other one is Wikimedia Commons. Uh, both of these websites, I guess it's commons.wikimedia.org. Both of these websites have lots of pictures of stuff, and uh, they're great for using for your website because it's easy to find the uh attribution and the Creative Commons licensing on these websites. Sometimes it's not very easy to find. Like you could list uh, whatever information that the website provides, but if you're finding images or just doing Google searches and you find something random and you want to use it, sometimes you're illegally using an image or sometimes you can't find the proper attribution to give on a given on any given website. And so you just... You run into some legality things and some ethical questions. And so if, if you're just doing this as a student, it's a lot easier just to use something like Pix for Learning or Wikimedia Co Commons, where you're going to easily find uh, what the original author of that image lists as their wishes for how that image can be used, either commercially, non-commercially, et cetera. Uh, with that being said, let's uh, find a frog to get a grab an image of and add to our website. So lots of cool frogs here. Um, let's see, I kind of like this picture, but I already have a tree frog. Let's see if they have any dart frogs. Uh, let's go back here to the main page, dart frog. Poison. Oh yeah, these guys are cool. Okay, so this is one I want. This is what I want to add. I can click this download image. Here it is. I can open this up. All right, it opened up on another screen. I have three screens for my computer, gal. All right, boop. Get you out of the way. So that image is downloaded. I'm gonna go into my files now, or I thought that I was going to go into my files. Let me go into my files over here then. All right, let me drag this over. Here's my files. I'm going to go to my downloads. Here's that poison dart frog. I'm going to move this to my pictures folder. So here's my pictures folder. Here's that poison dart frog image. Minimize this. Let's go back over here to the website we're building on code.org. And I'm going to click Add Image right here. And you can see the images that are already uploaded to this website. And those files exist over here in the file space already. So I'm going to go ahead and click Upload File here. Here's my pictures on my PC. Here's the poison dart frog image I want to add. Open. And then you can, when you can see the image has loaded correctly, go ahead and click the X up here to exit this management. Uh, and then 
in here. Here's my poison poison dart frog, and it looks like the uh, name of this is already fine. So just enter. I don't need to make any changes to the name. Uh, if you need to make changes to the name, you just click rename here. It gives you the option to rename it, name it what you want, uh, what makes sense for your website and for your image files over here. So back to our <clears throat> uh, HTML file. So let's add this image, img, src, click. Uh, where is that? Poison dart frog space alt poison dart frog. I'm just describing what the picture is, and then it should be showing up down here. Yes. All right. So the next thing I want to do is add that attribution so that I'm making sure, uh, like right here. See, this is what's so great about Pix for Learning is here's the citation you're supposed to use. Control C. Let's head back over here. And then in this paragraph tag, line 31, control V. And boop, 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 boop in that paragraph tag. And there's the attribution there. And I can act, and I can still add uh, the, uh, the Creative Commons attribution. Uh, let's see if they explain anything about it. This image may be used by teachers and students in the school and classroom activities for the express purpose of improving student educational opportunities. The photographer retains the copyright to this image. So this is going to be a CC. They're maintaining their copyright. Uh, BY because uh, they wanted attribution and they want non-commercial use of this. They're okay with it being used for education but they don't want it being used for uh, monetary purposes or for the possibility that your website would be drawing funds via advertising or what have you. So non-commercial NC is the attribution we want to add. So CC, BY, NC. Very, very good. All right. Um, you know what? I kind of bumbled this, so I'm going to take the spaces out between those so that it shows up correctly here. C C B Y N C. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna finish bubble four finally. All right, bubble five. We're back to our dogs versus cats website. Uploading images. Uh, again, let me delete this. Be whoops, not rename it. Goodness, I'm gonna delete this image that I've added earlier because I already did this bubble. Delete, delete. There we go. So now it's back to what you can see as well, and no one's confused, I hope. You can upload images that you found elsewhere using the Add Image button. Go find an image of a different type of pet that you like and download it to your computer using right-click Save As. Once you have your images, click Add Image and upload the image from your computer into your project where you can then use it in your page. So do this, it says, Find an image that you are allowed to use. All right, let's, so let's just continue using Pix for Learning because as we've learned, Pix for Learning is an easy uh, way to make everything happen we want to. So for a pet that we want to use, I'm going to put in like parakeet. I don't know if I spelled that right. I did. I did spell it right. Uh, I really like this guy, just the straight up yellow and green uh, with some blue markings on him, parakeet. So this is the standard dude. And let's, it's said to right click save as, so that's another way you can save images from around the internet. So right click, save image as, opens up your file system, uh, and you can check the file type right here. This is gonna be a JPEG, which works with code.org. That's fantastic. I'm in my pictures folder already, parakeet. I don't have another parakeet in here, so we'll save that. It confirms that it's saved down here. I can click that X. Let's go back to our code.org project. I'm gonna click that add image button. I'm gonna upload the file. There's my parakeet. Open, it loads for me. Now that it's loaded, I can leave. 
All right, and then here's my parakeet file. So back to the index.html page, I'm going to add some stuff. So I've got dogs, cats, and just to make this make sense, let's do an h3 tag for birds. Now we have birds down here. Oh, whoops, I put that in the wrong space. So let's control C that. I uh, put it between the cat image and its attribution. So that paragraph tag, boop, boop, blank line 21, boop, control v my birds back down there. There we go. That's fixed. Enter down a couple times. Let's put in this image tag. Not a K. Let's put in an image tag. So image, src, uh, parakeet, and space, and alt, and parakeet. Spelled correctly, I hope. There we go. And it's ginormous, right? It's a huge image. So in the event that you have a really big, huge image, put your cursor between your source and your alt. I'm going to make some space there, and I'm going to tell it that the width should be in quotation marks, let's say um, 350px. All right, and so down here, now our bird image is an appropriate size for our website. So what I did is inside that image tag, I add a, added a width rule for that particular image, telling it that it needs to be 350 pixels wide. You can also do height, but uh, it kind of automatically does the height for you. If you want to do height, you can space just to show you how that works. If I told this to be 10 pixels tall, then it's 10 pixels tall now. If I tell it to be 100 pixels tall, right? If I tell it to be uh, 500 pixels tall, now it's taller than it is wide because I told it to be 350 pixels wide. But this was a this was an image um, that you don't have to mess with too much to get the sizing right, thankfully. So just telling it the width and the height will automatically uh, sync to your, not the exact width that you say, but a height that makes sense for that width, for that image. All right, boop, boop. Uh, we're entering down to line 25. We're going to put in our attribution. So back over here to this, here's the citation, control C. Control V, let's end that paragraph tag. Uh, whoops. Let's end that paragraph tag. There we go. And then at the end of this paragraph tag, I'm going to add the cc, by, and c. Right? Because again, they, they're they cool with us using this image as long as it's for an educational opportunity and they want to retain their copyright. That's that cc. They only want it used for school and stuff. That's the NC. All right. Okay, very good. Now we can move on. Let's go to bubble six. On bubble six, uh, image bug match. Let's take a look at this. Oh, okay. We've got to do some matching here. Each of the items below have a bug. Match the description to the correct bug. We've got A, B, C, D, and E. All right, so let's do these in order down here, and we'll just drag these over as we figure out where things belong. So the source attribute is spelled incorrectly. Uh, let's see. The source attribute is spelled incorrectly. Um, so that means that the... Uh, either the file name is spelled incorrectly or it's like SCR instead of SRC or something like that. Let's see. Um, hmm. 
Let's see, do any of these say, oh, yep, there, that one says SCR. So find the one, find E. That's what you want to match to that first one. And then let's see, the source and alt attributes are switched. Let's see, which one has them switched? So image, SRC, looking at C equals a cute little dog. The alt, oh, the alt has the file name and the source has the alt attribution. So yep, C is that second one. And then the file extension .jpg is missing from the image address. Um, oh, that's this one, that's A. You can see brown dog, but not brown dog.jpg like it's supposed to be. And then we have the image tag is incorrect and it's missing the source attribute. So the image tag is incorrect and it's missing the source attribute. So uh, SRC, brown space dog. No. That doesn't describe the problem. So image, alt, has the alt first, and there's no source. Uh, they tried to put in a source, but they didn't say source equals. So that means D is this last one, which is there's a space in the file name. And yes, there is a space in that file name. So then uh, now that you've done that, you can click submit. It's E, C, A, B, D, submit. Uh, and I'm going to move on then. To B, debug the missing image. All right. Hopefully we can move pretty quickly through this because I know we've spent a lot of time on some previous bubbles. Bubbles 4 and 5 took a while. Debug the missing image. Someone has submitted a bug report on this web page. Can you fix the bug? They expected that there would be an image of balloons, but instead there's no image at all. Uh, find and fix the problem that co is causing the bug. So... We've got some pink code here. It starts at line nine. Let's look at line eight. Image tag here. Image src equals balloons.jpg. <coughs> the file name's correct. They have the beginning quotation, but not an end quotation on that. Oh, and instantly we have our balloons showing up. If they don't automatically show up for you, refresh and save, and they'll probably be there as long as you corrected that image tag. All right, finish. Let's do C together. It debug the missing image too. Uh, on this one, they expected an image of Half Dome, which is a mountain in Yosemite National Park, a really famous mountain. And there is alt text, but no image. Let's see. So here's the image tag. Image SCR. Okay, common mistake. It's SRC, not SCR. We fixed that. There's Half Dome. Um, I haven't been on top of Half Dome. I went to Yo I've been to Yosemite twice. Uh, the last time I was in Yosemite... Uh, I hiked to the top of this mountain. This mountain is actually taller than Half Dome, and it's called Clouds Rest. Uh, at the top of Clouds Rest, it's really, really skinny. It's called it's what you call a knife's edge in mountaineering. And at the very top, it's like, a <coughs> as you can see, a very dangerous drop down this side of the mountain, and also a dangerous drop down the other side as well. And uh, as you're hiking on that knife's edge, you've got like, maybe two, three feet of space that you're walking on at the very top. And, you know, like 3,000 feet down and 3,000 feet down the other side. Uh, very tall, Clouds Rest, the tallest mountain in Yosemite National Park. And from Clouds Rest, you get fantastic views down into Yosemite Valley, which is this way, looking at the uh, southern portion of Yosemite National Park in this direction. And of course, you have a fantastic view of Half Dome from that uh, knife's edge as well on top of Clouds Rest. Really cool hike, really cool experience. I highly recommend you go to Yosemite National Park and do some hiking if you get the chance. It is absolutely gorgeous there. It's like no other place on earth. Uh, all right, let's finish. 
and let's do debug the missing image three with Pikachu apparently. All right, uh, they expected that there would be a second Pikachu image. Uh, and what happened is that they can see this alt text down here for Pikachu Game Boy, but there's no image showing up. So the first image is correct, but the second one is not. Image src equals Game Boy dot JPG and the alt text Pikachu Game Boy. All right, let's look at our file name. Our file name is Game Boy, but the boy or the B for boy is capitalized and it isn't here. So let's fix that. So backspace, shift key, B, Game Boy. And then here's our Pikachu Game Boy. Cool. Um, I had the Game Boy color growing up and it was a really cool, really cool little console. Lots of great games that were made for that console. Uh, all right, so now you have the, like the Nintendo Switch, the, the Nintendo 3DS, and all these things that are way more fancy and like way cooler than the <laughs> Game Boy. Sorry, everyone that's watching this and you're over 30. The technology we have now is cooler than the technology we had when we were kids. It's just true. All right, add alt to existing images. The alt attribute is short for alternative text. As you may have seen on web pages that do not load properly, the alt text appears to describe the image that is not rendering. Do this. Read the HTML and look at where the images are used. All right, so let's turn our inspector tool on. We have our H1 tag at the top on line 6. In H2 for Kyoto, Japan, we have our image tag for this lantern's picture. We have the paragraph tag. We have the another H2 for Paris, France. Another image tag for the Eiffel Tower. Uh, we have the paragraph tag here. We have the H, another H2 for Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. We have the statue there. We have the paragraph tag here. All right, so let's go and fix the alt. Let's add the alt uh, image descriptions here. So alt, and this is Japanese lanterns. All right, and then let's do it for the Eiffel Tower. So space, alt, uh, let me, mm, I'm not sure if I'm spelling that right. Let me double check. Eiffel Tower. Did I spell it right? Yes. Ha ha! First try. All right. So down here, line 16, get my cursor where it needs to be. Space, Alt. And this one, I think this is called Christ the Redeemer. Let's make sure. Christ the Redeemer statue. Yes, okay, Christ the Redeemer statue. So, Christ the Redeemer statue. There we go, and we've added the alt text to each of our image tags now. Okay, so let's finish. And let's go to add image link. It looks like we're going to be learning how to add a GIF or a GIF. A GIF or a GIF. I don't care where you stand on that argument. I say GIF, so you get to listen to me say GIF. Add image link. An image has already been uploaded for you. The next step is to link it to the web page. Do this. Add an image link for the image gymnast GIF. All right. Let's see. So here we've got the body tags, and we've got break tags, putting space around. So I think... I feel like it wants us to put the image above anything that's happening. So uh, with my cursor there at the end of line five, let's create a blank line. Let's add our image tag, source, gymnast gif, space, alt, uh, we'll just call this a gymnast 
uh, GIF, right? There we go, gymnast GIF. GIF T with a T on the end, because that's how you truly want to pronounce that. A GIF <laughs> with a U G H on the end. GIF. Uh, there you go. All right. It's showing up as intended. Let's move on. We now know how to add GIFs. Let's add a new image. We're going to add a cake. A cake. We're going to add a cake. All right. For this cake, uh, there's the recipe and prep time. And they really you know, went to bat for coming up with this uh, website title, cake. <laughs> what kind of cake? I don't know what kind of cake. The, cake. the kind of cake that takes these instructions to make. All right, do this. Add an image to the end of this cake recipe. Don't forget to use the add image button and include an image tag in your code. All right, fine, fine, fine. Uh, let's follow this instruction here. Add the image at the end of the cake recipe. So down here, make some space. Uh, let's go find a cake image, shall we? So let's... Uh, Let's go to Picks for Learning, see if we've got cake on Picks for Learning. Cake? Oh, yeah. All right. Um, you know, it's corny, but we're going with the Dr. Seuss cake. You can find magic wherever you look. Sit back and relax. All you need is a book. All right. Nice iambic pentameter there. Um, all right. So let's jump back over here. Well, let's download the image first. Downloaded, and it's a JPEG. We can use it. Ugh, there. Let's add the image, upload the file. Oh, where did it put it? Downloads, Dr. Seuss cake. There it is, open. There's my Dr. Seuss cake. Goodbye to you. It should be showing up here, and it did. There's my Dr. Seuss cake. Uh, making room down here, let's do the, our image tag, SRC, Dr. Seuss cake, space, alt, and the alt attribute, or alt text is going to be uh, colorful Dr. Seuss -E cake, colorful Dr. Seuss cake. All right, and then, boop, and the cake is ginormous, so let's control that width and make it a size that makes sense. Let's do like 400. There's our cakes, and it's uh, a more appropriate size for our website. Cursor at the end of that image tag. Down below, we want to add a paragraph tag to go here. And copy and paste the citation for this image, control V, paragraph tag, and let's go ahead and read what they said. Maybe used by teachers, students, classroom activities, educational opportunities, photographer who retains the copyright. All right, so the, it's again the CC, EY, and C. And there's all that information for everyone that ever needed to see it on our website. So let's finish there. And I think that's the last one for Bubble 6. Yes, it is. Let's finish. All right. You can use images to make a web page more personal. Do this. Add an image to the page. Make sure to follow the rules about copyright naming. Okay. Back to picks for learning then. Let's find an image we want to use. Uh, let's do like skate. Boarding. This is just something for me that I'm going to add. Um, that's not skateboarding, is it? It looks like they're wearing roller skates to me. Hmm. Dubious. I find it dubious. Uh, let's see. Let's, let's use this one. Skateboarding in Paris, France. Let's download it. It's a JPG. We can use it. Let's head over here, add image, upload file. Paris 66 is the name of that file. There it is. X. It'll show up here. There's my picture. Back to the HTML page. Cool picture. Boop, boop. Let's add this image. SRC. I'm going to 
type the whole thing out because I feel like it. And it's Paris, oh, 66, JPG. Let's head over, alt, not Atlanta, alt, equals, in quotation marks, um, skateboarding in Paris. Over, doot, 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 paragraph tag. I'll go ahead and put the in paragraph tag in here. And back over here, let's copy down with control C the citation. Oop. And then at the end, I'm assuming it's going to be another CCBY. And yes, CCBY in C. Oops. There you have it, folks. All right. We've got it added. Let's finish. And now on bubble eight, we need to add do extra code for height and width attributes. We've already done this a few times in this lesson. Uh, however, we haven't done it on as a challenge. Okay, so let's see. Uh, images are not always the right size for a web page. Luckily, there are width and height attributes to set how many pixels tall and wide an image is. Add the attributes inside the image tag using height and width. Do this. Read the HTML and look at how the height and width attributes are used. And then add height and width attributes to make the other images smaller. So we've got three images here. The first one already has height and width. So let's add it to these others. Uh, all right. So I guess you can actually add height and width at the end. So let's do height equals, do I spell height wrong? Maybe. Pi. H-E-I-G-H-T equals, and in quotation marks, let's give it a height of 220 uh, to make it the same height as this guy. And then move my cursor over. Let's do the width. Oop. And this one's set to 300, so we'll set that one to 300 as well, just to match all of these up. And then let's add the height equals, in quotation marks, 220 for this one as well. And we'll also do a width of 300 for this one. There you go. There's our pictures of pups. All right. I guess they're all corgis. Cool. Corgis are cute. That's it, just adding those height and width uh, rules for your specific images. Let's finish. And uh, you can choose to do these other challenges on your own, but this video has already gotten pretty long, so I'm not gonna do that. Uh, but there's B, challenge make an illustrated story, C, make a how-to guide, and add to your web page. On D, adding to your web page, it's going back to this, and you can add to that web page that you work, worked on on pre, a previous project. That's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this lesson as much as I did, and I hope you enjoy your week. All right.